Now that we're nearing the end of 2021 and tax season is just around the corner, did you know tax is one of the biggest expenses for profitable businesses? As a business owner, taxes can seem complicated and scary. It may be frustrating if you need to foot a big tax bill, but you don't understand how it was calculated, especially if you didn't take all the applicable write-offs that are available to you and your business. Today, I'll be going over top business tax deductions so that you can maximize your deductions and reduce your tax liability so that you can better plan for the upcoming tax season. Welcome back to my channel. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Gabrielle, a CPA in both Canada and the US, as well as a tax manager at one of the big four accounting firms. On my channel, I talk about everything money, ranging from saving and budgeting to investing, as well as tax tips. Today, I'll be covering top five tax write-offs that are available to businesses that you may not be aware of so that you can minimize your taxes in Canada. In Canada, you may be operating a business as mainly a sole proprietor or a corporation. If you are a sole proprietor, your tax based on the individual tax rates, which range from 20 to over 50% for combined federal and BC rates here in Canada. If you are incorporated, the combined federal and BC corporate rate is 27%, or if you're eligible as a Canadian controlled private corporation or CCPC for short, you can apply a reduced combined rate of 11% on the first $500,000 of taxable income. Keeping these tax rates in mind, let's jump into ways to minimize taxes so that you can invest more back into your business. Tax write-off number one, online tools and platforms. Given the direction the current world is going with the pandemic, a lot of businesses started or have been forced to operate online to some extent. With that comes many expenses related to online tools and platforms that were used to operate your business. For example, you may have organized online meetings on Zoom, needed file storage with Google Drive, edited documents with Adobe, and incurred domain and transaction fees for your website on Wix. The use of all of these platforms cost money, which can be used as tax deductions for your business. If you operated online businesses on Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, and or eBay, you will have also incurred monthly e-commerce fees, as well as countless transaction fees, which are all tax deductible expenses. With all of these different expenses, it is critical to have a solid accounting program in place to keep track of everything. This is where today's partner comes in. Cinder is an easy accounting software for e-commerce and SaaS businesses. The best part of Cinder is that the program automatically records all sales and merchant fees across multiple channels, such as Amazon, Shopify, eBay, Etsy, and more in real time into the accounting system. You can connect the unlimited e-commerce platforms to Cinder, or you can even upload an Excel file with all the data to have it reconciled. If you use other accounting systems such as QuickBooks or Xero, Cinder integrates between your current accounting system with e-commerce sales or payment platforms such as between QuickBooks and Shopify and many others as shown here. If you are a small business or just started your business and don't need all the fancy applications that come with QuickBooks or Xero, Cinder can be the standalone accounting solution for you as it auto creates and updates balance sheets and income statements. Cinder's automated solutions help small businesses as well as accountants and their clients from hours and hours of manual reconciliation, which helps prevent burnout during busy season. Cinder works seamlessly in both both Canada and the US with QuickBooks and Xero. You can even see here that Cinder is among the top integration apps on QuickBooks and is highly rated at 4.7 by over 1,300 reviewers. In fact, Cinder was backed by one of the biggest startup accelerators in the US, Y Combinator. If you're interested in trying out Cinder for your e-commerce or SaaS business, use my link in the description box down below to get $40 off, which is equivalent to a free one month trial. I will also have a special offer for 20% for you to check out which will all be linked in the description box down below. Also, don't forget that accounting software such as Cinder are all tax deductible. Now, let's move on to the second tax write-off, capital property. Let's get into the fun stuff. You may purchase certain assets such as a cell phone, camera, computer, office, furniture, and even a car for business purposes. For expenses that are not current but capital in nature, CRA defines them as giving elastic benefit or advantage. So these costs cannot be fully deducted right away. Instead, these costs are determined to be depreciable property and you could only take depreciation expense, also known as capital cost allowance or CCA for short. These assets are categorized 
categorize into certain CCA classes as shown here and depreciate it based on the applicable rate. For example, class eight fits most general properties such as furniture, appliances, and tools costing more than $500 each and have a CCA rate of 20%. There is currently an accelerated investment incentive measure in place where eligible property acquired before 2028 can depreciate 1.5 times the CCA rate. For vehicles, there is often a debate as to whether to purchase or lease. It really depends on your circumstances, such as how often you use your vehicle for business purposes, since personal use is not deductible, and the nature of your business. Interestingly, CRA has expanded their support for business investment in zero emission vehicles. That means if you need a car for your business and estimate an upcoming large tax liability, purchasing a Tesla would allow you a depreciation expense of 100% of the purchase cost up to $55,000. This is a big jump from normal vehicles that limit only $30,000 with a depreciation rate of 30%. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want a separate video going into depth about how to deduct vehicle expenses for your business. Tax write-off number three, product costs. If you sell physical products, any costs incurred related to product samples, packaging, transaction fees, postage, and shipping are all tax deductible. If you purchase tools to create products, tools that have a lasting benefit need to be capitalized and taken depreciation as mentioned previously. If you incur research and development or R&D costs for your product, there needs to be an assessment as to whether the expenses are deductible in the year or need to be capitalized and depreciated. There are also tax incentives for scientific research and experimental development tax incentives also called as SHRED, which encourage R&D to be performed in Canada and in which you can benefit in various ways such as an income tax deduction, an investment tax credit, or even a cash refund if eligible. Inventory can be an entirely different topic on its own and may or may be complicated based on the product that you sell. Though in summary, you could value your inventory at the lower of cost or fair market value. Your inventory valuation determines the cost of goods sold, which is used to calculate gross profit, i.e. sales minus COGS. This is extremely important to determine how much you are profiting from the sale of each product. Inventory can be various things such as physical goods for sale, work in progress for a professional practice such as an accountant, dentist, lawyer, or even a medical doctor, as well as crypto that has been mined. Tax write-off number four, home office expenses. If you pay rent for an office, that is obviously tax deductible. But how about your home office related costs? You could write off the costs related to the portion of your home where it is either your principal place of business or you use the space only to earn business income and you use it on a regular and ongoing basis to meet your clients or customers. Deductions you can take for your home office expense as a sole proprietor are maintenance costs such as your heating, home insurance, electricity, and cleaning materials, property taxes, mortgage interest, and depreciation, also known as CCA. And if you don't own your home, you can even deduct rent and other expenses incurred related to your workspace. You can calculate your home office expense by taking the area of the workspace divided by the total area of your home. In addition, if you use a part of your home for both business and personal living, you need to calculate how many hours in the day you use the rooms for business and divide it by 24 hours. For example, if you use a room in your home exclusively for business and it is 25% of the total size of your home, you could deduct 25% of all home-related expenses as part of your home office expense. The above example mainly relates to sole proprietors, but there can be tax planning done to deduct such expenses as a corporation. Tax write-off number five, miscellaneous business operating expenses. I'm cheating here a little bit and including some miscellaneous expenses as there are so many I want to cover but don't have enough time because otherwise this video would be like two hours long. So I decided to include a few operating expenses that may have slipped your mind as a small business owner aside from the typical expenses we all know that we can deduct such as office supplies, salary expense, as well as accounting tax and legal fees. The first expense that has become quite popular in the past few years are online marketing expenses. You may be advertising on Google, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and or influencer ads. These costs are all tax deductible when incurred to promote your business's product or service. Freelancers. Another type of costs that are becoming more common through use of Upwork and Fiverr are the use of freelancers and contractors for one-off tasks or projects. If you incurred costs related to a virtual assistant, graphic designer, photography services, video editor, website creator, copyright writer, etc. It may be common to pay it in cash via bank transfer without leaving a paper trail. So make sure to always collect supporting documentation when it comes to employing contractors so that you can deduct these expenses related to your business. 
Travel is another big one. If you need to travel for business purposes, then costs related to travel such as air, bus, train, vehicle, as well as accommodation expenses such as hotels and Airbnb are tax deductible. If you lump a business related and personal trip into one, you may only deduct the business portion of the trip and only if the primary purpose of the trip was for business purposes, not a week long vacation with one hour of business. For example, if you attended a three day business conference in Mexico, but you also decided to stay an additional two days as vacation, only costs related to three days of hotels, transportation, meals, subject to 50% for the business conference is deductible from your business income. However, the airfare to and from Mexico can be fully deductible as long as the primary reason for going to Mexico was for business purposes and that the cost of the airfare is comparable to the airfare you would have incurred if you had only booked a three day conference trip to Mexico. Meals and entertainment or M&E for short. Costs to treat your clients or potential clients out for dinner or to entertain them are also tax deductible, but there is a limit of 50% of costs. This is the main difference between accounting and tax since your financial statements may deduct the full amount, but for tax purposes, you can only deduct half. Costs related to meals are food and beverages, including taxes and tips, and the limitation applies to meal expenses incurred during travel as well. There are a few exemptions, such as if you throw an office party and invite all your employees, such as an annual Christmas party, then the M&E expense is fully deductible up to six events per year. As for entertainment, it is defined as amusement and recreation, such as costs of tickets for a theater, concert or other performance, costs of private boxes, at sports facilities, cost of a cruise, admission to a fashion show, nightclubs, etc. The general rule of thumb is if it was incurred to earn business income, then it is tax deductible. Of course, the expenses must be reasonable and any personal use is not deductible. It's also important to have supporting documentation such as receipts in case you get audited by the CRA. I hope you enjoyed my video today on top five tax deductions for small businesses so that you and your business can keep more of your hard earned money. There are actually a lot more expenses obviously not covered in this video, but for the sake of time, I have narrowed down to some commonly missed expenses that small business owners may have overlooked. Just a disclaimer that this video is not tax advice. While I am a CPA, I'm not your CPA, so please make sure to consult with your tax specialist. This video is just for informational purposes only to provide you a guide as to general tax write-offs out there that may be applicable to you. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure to hit the like button down below as well as hit the subscribe and notification bell for future videos. Leave in the comment section down below if you want to see more videos on taxes for businesses. If you enjoyed this video today, you will also enjoy these other tax related videos. If you watch until the very end, thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!